Uncle Mort's North Country by Peter Tinnerswood. When Carter Brandon returned to the factory from his week's holiday, they said you might as well take another week off. There's no work here for no one at the moment. So he took another week off work. This is what happened when he went out for days with his Uncle Mort in the car. It was an ancient Ford Zodiac with sad headlamps and limp seat belts. It was a cold car, a discontented, unyielding, unforgiving car. Uncle Mort stared hard at the scowl of its radiator and the pinched pallor of its windscreen and said to his nephew, Did you know Arthur Scargill had got the twin brother? No. Oh, not many people do, lad. He's the black sheep of the family, you see. Where does he live? Lancashire. <laughs> no wonder he's the black sheep of the family. It was mid-morning. There was not a cloud in the sky. The Queen was just about to distribute the Royal Maundy. There was a chronic shortage of radishes. Shall we go and see him? Why not? What do they call him, by the way? Dornford. What? Dornford? Dear God. No one really lives in Lancashire. And so they set off in the old Ford Zodiac and made for the high moors. They passed through cobbled mill towns with streams gnashing at their rocky beds. Meadow pipits launched themselves from dry stone walls and soared and sang. Grey wagtails bobbed and flickered their tails. Sheep stood sullen and silent at the side of the unfenced road, and peat bogs brooded at the misty horizons. And then at the crest of a bleak pass, they crossed over the county boundary into Lancashire, and the clouds turned black and purple-cheeked. Have you noticed, Carter, how the weather always gets more adverse when you set foot into Lancashire? Mm. The soft, rolling vowels of the wind rocked the car as they curled their way down into the valley bottom. Now they were in the land of cotton mills, but their great windows were eyeless, and their gates hung hopeless and forlorn, and there was no throb of steam engine or whir and clatter of endless belts. How long have you known Arthur Scargill's brother, then? Yonks. Well, I've known him since he were a nipper at infant school. He were chief convener of the Ink Monitors Committee, you know. Was he? Certainly. He led the first pupils' industrial dispute in the whole history of primary education in this country, you know. How? Well, the ink monitors were in conflict with the management over demarcation procedures with the blotting paper prefects. So we called them out on strike. And the kindergarten came out in sympathy, and there was picket line violence with the dinner ladies. I see. And then he went to the grammar, and brought the whole school out over the thorny question of the... Uh, underpants. Underpants? Certainly. Well, it was the same old story, Carter. The teachers met the lads take their underpants off before they went into the gym. A flagrant breach of human rights, as you well know. I don't. You do? It is inherent natural justice, Carter, that a man of the male sex, whatever his age, race, creed, or political persuasion, has an inalienable right to protect his unmentionables against the exigencies of vaulting horses. Aye. A man can get a bad dose of the exigencies from a vaulting horse, can't he? Certainly, Carter. That's why Dornford declared a strike. Oh, it were a triumph. <laughs> it lasted a year and a half. And at the end, the metalwork teacher was declared persona non grata. Well, that's what should happen to all metalwork teachers. Too bloody true, lad. I blame metalwork teachers for all the current ills that are destroying the texture of contemporary and modern society. And what are those? Ah, the obsession with home improvement and the building of damp rock gardens on BBC television. <laughs> Do you like Kate Bush, by the way? No. I can't abide her. Neither can I. It's high time she were pruned in public on Gardener's World. Uncle Mort instructed Carter Brandon to turn the car down a narrow, twisting lane tangled with wild honeysuckle and blackthorn. They crossed a small packhorse bridge, skirted a stone-strewn meadow cropped by a shaggy Galloway bull, and then in front of them they saw a low-slung, double-fronted cottage. It was made of stone. It had a slate roof and mullioned bay windows, and brass carriage lamps on either side of the front door. Here we are, then. This is where Dornford lives. They got out of the car and walked down a finely graveled path, flanked by neat low hedges of lavender and rosemary. 
There was a whitewashed wishing well with bamboo windpipes tied to the crossbar and fluttering saffron ribbons. Uncle Mort strode purposefully to the front door and hammered on it with his fist. Hey up, bugger lugs! It's me, Uncle Mort! There was no response. A missile thrush hurled its song from the top of the sycamore tree. A blue tit craftily worked the suppling branches of a ceanothus. He'll be in the back garden, Will Dornford. Come on, let's go and find him. He led Carter Brandon through a wicket gate round the side of the cottage. There was a water butt, a newly varnished church pew, and, propped against a neatly trimmed arbour, a railway station sign for Barnsley Court House. Good. Thank God we've not got to change at Dewsbury Central. They came to the back garden. There was a stone-flagged patio stretching out languidly from the French windows, flanked by apricot velvet curtains. There were large wooden tubs and terracotta pots filled with pelargonium, euonymus, holly and bay. There was a sheening lawn bordered by beds of roses, hebe and hibiscus. He's a devil for flowers. Oh, that's what they call them, is it? And then they saw him. Standing at the bottom of the garden in a grove of espaliered apples and damsons and stooping over a beehive was a figure dressed in navy blue fisherman's smock and broad-brimmed hat with flowing veil. I hope, Dornford. It's me, Uncle Mort. You remember me? I'm the one what can't stand Norwegians. The figure turned, straightened, and took off his broad-brimmed hat. And there at once they saw the familiar Scargill features, the haughty bourbon nose, the aristocratic cock to the head, and the tendency towards premature shaving. Don't tell you could pill it, Carter. Yes. I like his socks, though. Oh, well, you would. I mean, you're the generation what invented opinion polls, aren't you? As soon as he saw Uncle Mort, Dornford let out a sharp squeak of delight and hurried towards him, arms extended.